congratulations, it's a boy, or congratulations, it's a girl. As a pediatrician for nearly 20 years, that's how many of my patient relationships began. Her bodies to clear our sex. Biological sex is not assigned. Sex is determined at conception by our DNA, stamped into every cell of our bodies. Human sexuality is binary. Either you have a normal Y chromosome and develop into a male, or you don't, and you will develop into a female. There are at least 6,500 genetic differences between men and women. Hormones and surgery cannot and do not change this. Look, an identity is not biological, it is psychological. Identity has to do with thinking and feeling. Thoughts and feelings are not biologically hardwired. Our thinking and feeling may be factually right or factually wrong. For example, if I walk into my doctor's office today and say, Hi, I'm Margaret Thatcher. My physician will say I am delusional and give me an antipsychotic. However, if instead I walked in and said, I am a man, he would say, Congratulations, you're transgender. If I were to say, Doctor, I am suicidal. I'm an amputee trapped in a normal body. Please, surgically remove my leg. I'll be diagnosed with body identity integrity disorder. But if I walk up to that same doctor and say, I'm a man, sign me up for a double mastectomy, my physician will. See, according to most mainstream medical organizations, if you want to cut off a healthy arm or a healthy leg, you're mentally ill. But if you want to cut off healthy breasts or a penis, you're transgender. Let's be clear. No one is born transgender. If gender identity were hardwired in the brain before birth, identical twins would have the same gender identity 100% of the time. They don't. I had one little boy, a patient we'll call Andy. Between the ages of three and five, he increasingly played with girls and stereotypical girl toys and started saying he was a girl. I referred the parents and Andy to a therapist. Sometimes mental illness of a parent or abuse of the child are factors. But more commonly, the child has misperceived family dynamics and internalized a false belief. In the middle of one session, Andy put down the toy truck and held on to the Barbie and said, Mommy and Daddy, you don't love me when I'm a boy. What the therapist learned is that when Andy was three, his sister with special needs was born. She required significantly more of his parents' care and attention. Andy misperceived this as, Mommy and Daddy love girls. If I want them to love me again, I have to be a girl. With family therapy, Andy got better. Today, Andy's parents would be told something quite different. They would hear, this is who Andy really is. You must change his name, ensure that everyone treats him as a girl, or else he will commit suicide. As Andy would approach puberty, the experts would put him on puberty blockers so that he could continue to impersonate a girl. Experts assure us it doesn't matter that we've never tested puberty blockers in biologically normal children. It doesn't matter that when blockers are used to treat prostate cancer in men and gynecologic problems in women that they cause problems with memory. We don't need testing. No, we need to arrest his physical development now or he'll commit suicide. But this is not true. Instead, when supported in their biological sex through natural puberty, the vast majority of gender-confused children get better. Yet, we are chemically castrating gender-confused children with puberty blockers. Then, we permanently sterilize many of them by adding cross-sex hormones. Cross-sex hormones are estrogen and testosterone. Those put young children at risk for heart disease, strokes, diabetes, cancers, and even the very emotional problems that experts claim to be preventing. P.S. If a girl who insists she is a man has been on testosterone daily for one year, she's cleared to get a bilateral mastectomy at age 16. Now mind you, the American Academy of Pediatrics recently came out with a report that urges pediatricians to caution teenagers about getting tattoos because tattoos are essentially permanent and can cause scarring. But this same AAP is 110% in support of 16-year-old girls getting a double mastectomy, even without parental consent, so long as the girl insists that she is a man and has been taking testosterone daily, 
for one year. Let's be clear, to indoctrinate all children from preschool forward with the lie that they could be trapped in the wrong body disrupts the very foundation of a child's reality testing. If a child can't trust the reality of their physical bodies, who or what can they trust? Transgender ideology in schools is psychological abuse that often leads to chemical castration, sterilization, and surgical mutilation. If that's not child abuse, ladies and gentlemen, what is?